Sammy Hagar here. Welcome to another Rock and Roll Road Trip. Now, this episode is a little freaky because we're talking with three drummers. Not just three drummers, but three of the greatest drummers in rock and roll and music today. They've done it all. Uh, superstars. We got Mr. Kenny Aronoff, played with everybody in the planet. We got Sheila E., platinum Grammy artist, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we got Mr. Jason Bonham, and uh, he plays with me, but uh, don't hold him. Grammy winning Don't take that against him. Wait, don't hold that against Grammy him. Grammy winning artist too. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you very well, much. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> welcome. And so, Sheila, we kind of go back yes. like, to San Francisco and stuff. With Absolutely. The early, when I was first starting in Montrose and all those early 70s, I'd see you at SIR. SIR. There, Absolutely. So, being a drummer that came out from behind the drums, I mean, there's, you know, there's very few guys, girls, anybody that's ever done that. You're one of the few that actually came out, became a front person, uh, name on the marquee, you know, Don Henley and Buddy Miles, I mean, you know, it's, it's a rare <laughs> thing. So, did you plan that? I mean, how did that happen? Every drummer probably wishes that would happen, right? Well, how it's, the hell did it's, you do that? It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's different because I started playing percussion, so I wasn't a drummer, I, I'm a percussionist who actually plays drums, a little bit of drums. And um, so going up listening to my dad play, it was always percussion in the house. When his band would rehearse in the living room, uh, his drummer would get off and was like, I want to play drums too. So I'd get off for a minute, and like, oh, okay. Uh, long story short, we go into uh, me playing percussion with my dad at 15. Uh, professionally, I was like, this is what I want to do. And your dad one of the greatest. Oh, he's amazing. In the world. No, he's I mean, come on, still man. amazing. We just played eight shows together. He's still killing, killing it, kicking butt. But then um, I was introduced to Billy Cobham did a, a record on my dad and I, and that's how I met George Duke. So with George Duke, I go to his band, and in Dugo at the time, and Dugo Chancellor's playing drums, George had a song called Reach For It, and, and Dugo wanted to be in the front. And so he said, you play drums. I was like, OK. So I played drums. And next thing I was like, yes, this is what I want to do, is play some rock and roll, some funk. 
It's that easy, folks. You it can become a superstar, easy. sell millions of records, <laughs> and get a Grammy Award and all that stuff just because somebody invites you to sit down at the kit. Yeah, so, <laughs> Kitty. Yeah. Kitty, we all know that you've played with everyone. Yeah. Is there anyone that you haven't played with? I would love to play live with Jeff Beck once. You haven't? I recorded with him. He wasn't he there. Wasn't. Oh, he wasn't he there. He wasn't there. Oh, that's different. Someone told, <laughs> I know, someone told me he was going to be there, and then, then I realized he ain't coming in to track. Jeff Beck doesn't track. He comes in, plays a solo once or twice, and leaves. Okay, so and, we'll get Jeff. Jeff, can yeah. you hear this? Okay, we'll get Jeff yeah, for Jeff you. Jeff Beck. Okay, but who is... I, I, no, I need some high Jeff, I mean, okay, okay, I will. Some it started in Jack rock. and Diane. Is yeah, that, that's my, you, right? My, my, my first break was with John Cougar Mellencamp, and when I did this drum solo on Jack and Diane, which was either I was going to get fired or I was in the band. <laughs> it's legendary. And yeah, uh, and so that launched, I blew his career up, but launched my career. Like all of a sudden, who's this guy? Anyway, I did that for 17 years. Good sound of records. And then, um, then I went to Bob Seger. Then I did 10 years with Joe Cogger, 10 years with Melissa Etheridge. I did uh, this super group called Chicken Foot. <laughs> I did uh, uh, like uh, John Fogarty from Creedence Clearwater for about 25 years, and then I've even filled in with Sticks, Goo Goo Dolls, stuff that like that. That means you're like 110 right now. I, well, there was overlap. There was overlap. That's a lot of it. That's very special to have played with that many people. Who's the biggest asshole you've ever played with besides me? Ooh. No, besides me. No, you're not a big, you're not a big Excuse asshole. Me. Oh, no. No. Sorry, dude. You're He's image, a little. You're, you're a nice uh, guy. Come on, who's the worst guy you ever played with, Kenny? Who was the most trouble? Who gave you the most? Come on I can't now. say that. You can't say names. All right, can't, you'll never work again. No, I, okay, I forget you. Jason, yourself. You. Yourself. <laughs> Jason's a great singer. People don't realize this guy's in my band. He, at Soundcheck, you're always singing. You're singing Bad Company songs. You're singing soul uh, tunes. Yeah. You're singing anything. But it now, was, in my but band, know, but you won't know. sing. Yeah, I, I'm just in a our frustrated. Band, in our band, you won't sing. I, I always say, if you can't do it brilliantly, you do. I'd rather not. Is it hard to sing it. and play at the same time? Um, yeah. Definitely. I mean, how best? you do it with the breathing, the breathing, uh, I mean, even like Phil Collins, who was one of my total heroes who I got to work with, yeah, it, you find you can't sing and play, unless... Yes, you can. See, okay. I do it all the time. See, what was it like playing with Prince? Come on now. Yeah. You should ask, I wish he was here, as you could ask him, how was it like playing with Sheila E? I wish I could. Yeah. <clears throat> it was, uh, we had a blast. Did you learn a lot? I mean, you came as an accomplished musician, don't get me wrong, but did you learn about songwriting or pop music or did he, did you get something out of that? The only thing that was different that, one of the things that was different that I could say was coming from recording with other artists here when I come to Los Angeles, um, being in the studio with other artists, it's like, oh, tape up your cowbell. Uh, I hear a rattle, tape this up. It was so clean. And, you know, it kind of took away the sound. Everything had to be, so that sound was just like this. When we come to L.A., mm -hmm. it was like there was no movement. With Prince, we would go in the studio. We'd barely finish, you know, setting up, and he just counted off. We'd go into it. It's like if the um, bass is distorted, that's the sound he wants is let's distort the bass. And, you know, the cowbells are rattling. You know, there's some stuff on the timbales. Just leave it. You know, that's He's the way. It's about the ring. Vibe, right? It's so all about vibe. the ring. So Leave when you get, ring. yeah, so yeah. when you get, when everything is the way that it's supposed to be, that also then feeds into the ambience of the song because you've got stuff happening where you really don't hear it, but it's there and it's, it's, it's yeah. making that, that funk sound funky, you know? You don't want to make it clean. Oh, that stuff sounded good. I, I, just, I just heard 1999 this morning and I was just like, oh, I'm gonna go see you. you know, <laughs> in Prince, I had to, so I had to bring up Prince. Kenny, you're the go-to drummer today. I mean, seriously, everybody knows. This guy has more gig. Every time I turn TV on, there's some uh, kind That's of a, an event, and Kenny's playing drums. It's like, I get invited to do some event. Kenny's the drummer. It's like, <laughs> how, the how president did, get voted how the He's hell? the drummer. But uh, are you but, happy? Are you satisfied with that? Uh, did you ever I feel like, it. I would just want to grab that singer and that guitar player and that bass player I'm, and I'm, start a band? I'm a band guy, first, first See, but and foremost. why haven't you ever done but, that? Is it, is it you're well, too I busy? Did, you're too busy. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> what people don't know about me is because there was no school of rock when I was a kid and there was nobody say, this is how you become a rock star. I grew up in a town of 3,000 people. So I started studying classical music. And then I, for some reason I went down that road, always played in bands, and my reading chops went whew, through the roof. And playing all the percussion, playing in symphony orchestras. A lot of people don't know this, I got into the Jerusalem Symphony Orchestra 
And I turned it down because I wanted to go back to rock and roll. But what happened was later on in life, having that ability to read and, and uh, you know, all the other things that come with that kind of discipline brought the rock and roll and that world together. And when I learn songs for you, I write every note out. And then, so that at least I understand what we're talking about. That is exactly right. my, my way. I know I mean, that about you. My dad's whole theory was, like self-taught, he didn't have a drum kit till he was even 16. Uh, he only had a snare drum. We had a jukebox in the house, and he would put on certain songs. Mm. And I'd be four years old, and he'd go, play this, play that. And they were always old, like Motown yeah. songs, and a lot of like early uh, Free and, and Bad Company and groove stuff, you know? And he always says, and I'd go, Dad, I want to learn how to go. Do it. He goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> I want to hear you go. To, and make me play along. So like Dr. John, he'd make me play with Dr. John. Oh, he made his... you play with Dr. John. Yeah, because- One of the baddest mother- What six-year-old, yeah. what, si what five-year-old kid knows Dr. John? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, I want to jam yeah. to Dr. John. How could you stoop so low? Yeah. So, so <laughs> I when I was in the movie, and that song remains the same as a little kid, you only hear, you see me play, but you don't know what I was playing, it's uh, the mm. dad. We found the footage, and I'm playing, gotta be the right place. Ding, done the wrong time. Okay, yeah. so if it wouldn't have been for your father, do you think you would have been a drummer? I'd say if it wasn't for my father, I wouldn't be here. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, oh, wait a minute. Okay, let me rephrase that, ladies and gentlemen, there. Um, but no, me, no, if it were your father wouldn't have been a drummer, do you think you would have taken for a, me, became a drummer? Sadly for me, if he hadn't have passed, I don't know if I would have continued drumming. Interesting. Because um, I was a very successful motocross junior rider and sponsored and raced dirt bikes and, and was very, very good at that. Um, and so until my dad passed, and it was about two years after my father passed, I said, you know what? I want to make him proud. Because he always used to say, you will keep playing the drums, won't you? Wow. I know you love your bikes, awesome. wow. but you will keep playing your drums, right? That's and awesome. I used to go, yeah, yeah, Dad, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. How about you, Sheila? Do you think of without your father's influence and all that, you would have said, I'm going to be a drummer? Um, I didn't know I was going to play percussion. Um, he, yeah, he we'll call you percussion. <laughs> like that. I'm no, good. but he forced me to uh, forced me to play violin at in the third grade. Oh. I took it for five years, got scholarships, and I didn't want to play. I was an athlete. My mom's an athlete. So I was um, um, track star. Track star, yeah. Bad so my girl thing, could run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I was, I was training to be in the Olympics and also played an undefeated uh, women's soccer team and won trophies for most wow. goals. And well, so, hell, so hell, that's, hell. yeah, yeah, so well, soccer. Cool. Yeah. So that's why playing double kick team? for me, it's like it's running. How was it playing with Led Zeppelin and that thing in London? You're standing back there in the drums with Robert, Jimmy. It, I mean, playing, were playing you with them out? is. No, come on, were you, you freaked out? I've, I've you did a great I've, job. I've had the priv the thank you. I've you had the privilege job. of playing with them on a few different incidents, uh, on moments, and it's but one how, of those that things. Was a real that gig, for me, bro. that, so was, that a for real me gig. was I was finally old enough to realize who they were. I was, oh my God, this is Led Zeppelin, yeah. and they were like, hold on, when did you become a fan? And I'm like, too late. I said, because when dad was alive, he was just dad. It was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, Stuart Copeland's better than you. You know, I like the police. It was. No, I was telling you. I get it. So to get a chance to look at those guys, it was a highly emotional thing. Because all I yeah. wanted to do was make those guys smile. Sure. Because to me, a smile from them was as if I was getting it from my dad. Here's the deal this or that. And I don't want anybody going wishy washy me on, uh, on the, you know, dip. Okay, Kenny. Ringo or Paul McCartney? Oh, Ooh. that's not nice. Oh, God, that's Paul McCartney, come on, that. be honest. This or Ringo that. McCartney. Yeah. <laughs> Ringo. Uh, Sheila, I'm going to go easy on you. Well, you're not going to answer. You're not going to, right? Okay, uh, going to? Uh, I have to say McCartney because of the yeah, songwriting. The he songwriting. Went, he's like, McCartney. <laughs> no, I love Ringo Starr. I think he was a genius, but I, the, the songs came of from course. the songwriters. Okay. I have to go I'm going to go easy on Sheila Sorry. relative to that. I love you. Playing a full kit 
or just being a percussionist, you know, standing up. And just, just being a percussionist. Scraping and shaking. <laughs> Sitting down. Just being a percussionist. How dare you? How dare you? I'm Son leaving. I know this show's over. Leaving this show. Welcome to another rock and roll road trip that bombed. Oh, 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 oh. I don't mean it like that. I just mean like. Just being a lit. How dare I am leaving the show. Sheila, please come back. I am leaving the show. Please, please, please. Oh, please. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Oh, oh, the oh, cave, oh, the cave. Oh, no. Uh, Sheila, please. No, please, please. No, it's okay. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. No, I think he can do it. Oh, my God. All right, gosh. well, I'm not just being a percussion. You need to give me that. What else can excuse. you ask me? Forget. Forgive me. No, look, look. You can't him. Now ask a question. Please forgive him for that okay. one. Even had... I'm leaving now. Hold That's on. it. Hold on. Oh, if you, oh if you had one, back up. If you had one thing you could only do, you'd say, I, you're just going to be the percussionist. Drive home after shaking this and scraping in this band, or you're going to sit down at the kit and fuck it and be the full drummer. I, you Which need another you question. Be? I'm not answering hey, that question. Yeah, you need Ain't another question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason, when the levee breaks are rock and roll. Levee breaks. Okay. Kenny, doing a gig? Or doing a session? A live show or a session? Live show. Boom. Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Prince, I'll read it Prince first or Michael I'll Jackson? Oh, I knew you were going to ask that. That's too easy. Michael Jackson. No, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> See, she got them both. God rest both their she souls. She got them both. Yeah.